Hi, this is Trevor Conkergood. Welcome to this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. And our topic for this week is how to digitize a low quality backdrop. And so if that's something that you've always wanted to do, this is a great video for you. And so let's go ahead and get started and I'll make my workspace nice and large. And so when we say how to digitize a low quality backdrop, what I have on my screen right now is actually a vector copy of the all the shapes that I need to digitize and I guess create embroidery of the happy face um, but i have a backdrop here that i would consider to be pretty low resolution um, and you can tell low resolution backdrops because they're very pixelated and what should really be a smooth line starts to look almost like a set of stairs uh, because of the um, size of each sort of dot of color is very small or very large i should say um, if i go to the next screen over that i prepared this one is a better quality JPEG. And although you'll see if you zoom in that it is still pixelated, it's much better than the first one that I had. And this um, third one would be a much better quality. And so certainly you can see the difference where sort of the smaller the pixels and the more number of the pixels, uh, then the better uh, it is for digitizing. Now, especially if you want to use the wizard for auto digitizing and uh, even just the magic wand for digitizing, because with the magic wand, I can easily click on and automatically trace out, you know, those eyes. And you'll notice this is a button here that's like the hide and show backdrop that when I hide it, you can see that it's done a pretty good job of tracing those eyes and I would be ready to, you know, convert them into embroidery and you could make them into any kind of embroidery that you want, but I'll just convert them into like a little satin path. And so the idea is that if you have good quality backdrop image, then you're going to be able to get a much better uh, response from the auto tracing when you click on the colors and the program uh, traces the shapes. Now, if you have a uh, decent quality, but not great quality, and so this was the second example, then I think it becomes possible to use the auto trace. It really depends on how good and how not good it is. But um, you'll notice when I uh, use the magic wand to trace these eyes, that although it has no troubles finding the eyes and making them, um, they're a little bit uh, not quite as smooth of a line as they were when I had the better quality image. And that is a lot of times not even noticed because once you convert this into, you know, a satin stitch, that may not even be noticeable. Uh, but if it is, there's certainly ways that you can resolve it. Uh, for example, if I zoom in and I switch to the shape tool, that allows me to see all of those points and even select all of those points and then right click over top of those points and ask them to smooth. So that will help smooth them. The, the other thing you might, if you really wanted to smooth it, might just be there's just too many of them. And maybe what you need to do is click on some of them and just delete them using delete, you know, on your keyboard. And then having, you know, less of them makes it easier for when you do use, you know, the option for the software to smooth it to be able to make that a nice smooth line. And so you can smooth them out if you're using the automatic, you know, tracing. Um, but I think when you get down to the low resolution one, and if this is all you can find uh, for a graphic to begin, you know, digitizing from, and it's very pixelated, then I think your tools like the magic wand are going to require a lot of fixing, you know, to really be able to get that into the correct shape and at this point, I think using other tools is a better uh, solution. And so if you have a low resolution image, one of the things that you will learn to do is use the pencil and the basic shape tools to make your own shapes. And so with the pencil, of course, um, when I click on the pencil, it's going to start with whatever mode you 
most recently used, but you can change that right beside the pencil. There's a button and there are several different ways of drawing. This will depend on which version of Floriani software you own. But if you have all of the different levels, then there are six different modes of drawing. I think that the first one line mode is available in all of the programs. And so is I think pen and Bezier are the most common ones. Those will be in fusion. The curve and the arc actually come from the quilting software. If you have the quilting program and then this last one quick draw will be only for people with the FTCU, but you only need to learn one of them, you know, and you can, there's videos just to learn about these drawing tools. But if I click on the first one, the way it works is of course you click, and then you click and then you click. And if you hold down your control key on your keyboard, you'll get a smooth line. Uh, if you don't get hold down control, you'll get uh, sort of corners and straight lines. And you can keep clicking as many times as you want. And when you right click, you stop drawing. And that's how you make artwork. And so if you're artwork is poor resolution and you want to draw the mouth, you can just click on the pencil and make your first click and then move, you know, along a certain ways and click down the center and using that control key and staying down the center, I can draw, uh, you know, a nice curved line that matches the shape of the mouth. And then I right click. So there we drew a line to represent the mouth. For the eyes, we either need to click, click, click around it, or we could just use our ellipse tool, right? We've got rectangles, ellipses, triangles, you know, pentagons and hexagons. So if I click on the ellipse, I kind of know to start in the top left corner, like around here. Then when I click and drag, look, I can almost make that exact eye. Uh, but if you don't get the exact eye, you do have the handles that you can use to resize it. Um, you can also use the, so the center handles to kind of squish them into place. Uh, but you, the idea is you can easily make a shape that fills even though the pixels aren't there if you just use the tools yourself. And so I think that's probably my uh, solution to low resolution JPEGs. Anyway, this was a question that was asked on our Facebook group and it was a great question. And so we decided that it was a great topic for a weekly video. And so essentially what I need to create are the exact same shapes that I had in the first place, right? We need to have the two eye shapes. Uh, we need to have the mouse shape. We also need to have the yellow, you know, circle for the background that we can click fill to fill in. Uh, then we can click on our eyes. And I usually do them as a satin path. And that allows me to draw, you know, at least one inclination and also interact with where they start and stop. And so I'll do something like this. And, um, you know, you go through. And so I need a shape for each eye. I need a shape for the circle. And I'll probably copy and paste that shape for the circle to make the black border. So really, what do we need left here? Because I already drew the mouth and we could make that a steel stitch. And I already drew the eyes. And so we can select on those and maybe just use the auto satin to fill them in. And so what we're missing is the actual circle. So now I think I want to go back to the tool. And rather than making an ellipse, what I can do is if I hold my control key down, it makes it stay as a perfect circle. And so I can make a perfect circle and then bring it you know, over top of where it is. And if it seems like it's not the perfect size, I've got the corner handle. As long as I stick within a corner handle, it'll always keep the proportions of the perfect circle. So the trick was when you use the ellipse tool uh, to hold down to make a perfect circle and the same thing with a square or rectangle, I can make any rectangle, but if I hold down control, it'll force my shape to be a perfect square. So if you want to make square happy face, then that's perfect. But if you want circular happy face, then obviously you'll use the circle tool. And so now that I've created that circular happy face, I would click on fill to fill it in. I guess I decide that it should be yellow and I'll change the color to yellow. And because of the way that we created the shapes, we made the yellow circle last. Therefore, it's on top of the eyes. So essentially what we need to do is select that black color and move it down to be after the yellow color. And I can just click and drag on my workspace to resequence it. And so I guess lastly, if we want to have a black border around our circle, we could click on it to select it, use copy and paste to make a second copy of it. 
instead of filling in the second copy, we'll click on the steel stitch tool to make it an outline. Of course, now you can decide how wide it is with the numbers in your properties box. And at this point, you're probably just about done with making it. Maybe you want to change the color of that to be black. And so this is our solution to digitizing the low resolution backdrop. It's all still there, the backdrop. We just used our tools to kind of color over top of it. And so if your backdrop is of a very good quality, you may be able to use the magic wand to automatically trace shapes like eyes. Uh, but if not, you may need to, uh, on a lower resolution, resort to using the pencil and doing a little bit of clicking to digitize, and it's not that bad. Um, you'll probably find that it goes very quickly, and um, it's actually quite fun. So there you have it. This That's this week's RNK Software Club's video for the week. Until next week, thanks for watching, and bye for now.